Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. The official launch of South Africa's long-awaited digital migration project is now only weeks away. Natasha Wittendahl joins me to share some insights into the move from analog broadcasting to digital terrestrial television. Natasha, welcome to Second Take. Okay. Can you refresh our minds, why is South Africa migrating to digital broadcasting? Well, in 2006, South Africa committed, along with many other countries, to move to digital broadcasting from analog by June 17, 2015. Now, initially, South Africa wanted to switch on the digital signal um, in 2008, in November, and then run for a period of three years analog and digital broadcasting, and then switch off the analog in November 2011. But obviously, this proved a bit unrealistic, and so they switched the date to 2012. But obviously, a number of delays, ministerial changes, and selecting a set dot box standard, which you need to use to broadcast a signal, or receive the signal, should I say, um, all led to further delays. But now, DOC has committed to switch it on in early October. I understand the project will be launched in two phases. Can you take us through how it will unfold? Well, the first phase launch, um, which is a proof of concept launch, this will happen in the Northern Cape, um, pretty much to make sure that A, it does work, and that it would not interfere with SKA's project, you know, with their low frequencies. It also aimed to prove that deep rural areas can now actually, for the first time, get television signals. The second phase um, will happen, I think it was early December or maybe late November, where they will switch the digital signal on nationwide. And that would mark officially the start of South Africa's digital migration. The first phase launch will use 20 set-top boxes in the rural area. The first 10 set-top boxes will use terrestrial-based signals, which means it'll use uh, Centex um, transmission sites to actually broadcast the television signal. The others, uh, the other 10 or the remaining 10, would be a direct-to-home satellite-based transmission um, in the direct-to-home satellite-based transmission, the, obviously the signal will be satellite-based, but it would also cover the 12% of the population where terrestrial-based signals will be deemed too uneconomical or too expensive to actually go into and to put towers in there. What technology will be used and will digital broadcasting mean that every household will have to buy one of these set-top boxes? Well, South Africa eventually, after you know, multiple options that were placed to them, chose the European standard, the second generation DVB-T. Um, this standard, uh, well, they said to have double the efficiency of the first generation, and it would also open up a little bit more um, spectrum for the broadcasters than the J Japanese-based standard, which they initially wanted. South Africa has about 11.5 million TV owning households. Of these, 5 million of the poorest TV owning households would be subsidized, well 70% subsidized by government. Um, the other remainder would need to actually acquire their own set-top box to actually see um, any channels that are broadcast terrestrially, which would be SABC 1, 2, 3, ETV, community television stations and so on. So they would need to actually get the set-top box to continue watching their channels. Um, any of the satellite-based channels like DSTV wouldn't need a set-top box to continue watching. We would need to actually see whether South Africa would actually switch off its analog transmission by next year, December, which it's still aiming for, or whether they would be able to actually get all the subsidized STBs out and entice other, co like other consumers to buy the STBs to use. <laughs> What are some of the benefits of moving to digital broadcasting? Well, the benefits seem to be quite vast. I mean, you'll have better quality television, better sound. High definition um, television can also come into play. On some set-top boxes, you can even have internet access. So jobs, jobs could be key in this. I mean, the DOC said that about oh, over 23,000 jobs could be created from the migration project itself. W will it mean the set-top boxes will be locally manufactured? Yes, yes it would. Set-top boxes will all be locally manufactured, or that's DOC's aim. 
Um, so it would obviously then be offshoot. I mean, our own call centers for the STB boxes would also need people to work there, people who know how to install it, um, maintain the STBs. Um, would need to also be locally based. Natasha, thank you very much. Thanks. That is the second Tech Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.